his fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore oh what fellowship divine fullness of joy. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we're going to be praying at this time. I'm going to be inviting you to stand. Praise the Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We are grateful, God, for provision that you have made. We thank you, Lord, even for making it possible for us to be assembled together to study your words, Lord God. And as we come in your house, we pray that your presence will be with us throughout this study. We pray that you'll touch our minds, help us to be mentally alert, that God, we will receive that which you have in store for us. So we pray, God, that you'll cover our teacher, our pastor. We pray for your anointing upon her. I pray that you'll just use her for your glory to present what you have in store, Lord, for us, that it will be presented with clarity and our hearts will be receptive. We pray that you'll touch all those who have joined us online. Minister to them in a very special way. I pray that those who are present physically as well as those who have joined us virtually will all be blessed by what we have received and will give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. I'm going to be reading from St. John chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 14. So the reading is taken from the book of St. John, the first chapter, and we're reading from verse 1 to verse 14. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to be a witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Can we praise the Lord Jesus? Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? Praise God. He's worthy to be praised. I'd like to invite Pastor Brissy to come at this time in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Minister Driss Dale. Hallelujah. Giving God thanks to be here one more time. And someone once said he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. I promise just to be faithful as long as I can. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
Oh, my God. May God help me. I just want to find the perfect will of God. Amen. I'm greeting those who have joined us and those who will join us in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a great God. You know, I just love to study the word of the Lord. We started to look on this, what seemed to me at the time, a very simple topic. But I'm telling you, it is growing leaps and bounds. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The more I dig, <laughs> it becomes deeper and deeper. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just pray for me that I'll be able to because I have challenges as you know, but through God, I am still here. Amen. We'll continue on our study. What did it say? A man called Jesus. And this is supposed to be part four. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In this area of study, we will look at Jesus' divinity and his humanity. We will just be looking at one aspect this afternoon, beginning with his divinity. And do we know what that means? Tell us, share. Divine nature, divinity means divine nature of God. I'm sure if a student tells you that, you would be satisfied. The godly part, the God part of him. The man. Because we are studying, yeah, we are studying a man called Jesus, so the God part of the man. All right. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, let me share a personal experience. As a new convert, which you know, it's many, many moons ago, I read a tract titled, The Dual Nature of God. The contents, I have forgotten. But the purpose is still clear and relevant. It was showing that Jesus is God, made known in the flesh. Praise the Lord. That was the purpose of that track. Bless the Lord Jesus. We have just read John 1, 1 to 14. And uh, as I contemplated the, the divine part of Jesus Christ, or the divine function, in the way you want to put it, that was the first scripture that came to mind. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we always skip the rest of it and go down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, dwelt among us. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Scriptures supporting the divinity of Jesus are all over the New Testament. Many, many, many. And, and it will take us weeks to consider each reference. But we are just going to look at some. Not all of them. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Some of those scriptures or scriptural references we have touched on in other studies, especially when we are looked at the prophetic utterances regarding Jesus and their fulfillment. One such 
reference is about the virgin, which would bear a child. His name should be called Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Which is by interpretation, God with us. And we had looked at Isaiah 7 and verse 14. And uh, the fulfillment, Matthew 1, 22, 23. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In John 10 and verse 30. Jesus said, I am, sorry, I and my father are one. Hallelujah. It boggles my mind. Because when you add one and one, you get two. Hallelujah. So, so no, no one in the scripture says, great is a mystery of godliness because I and my father are one not even Siamese twins he said about they are conjoined as we say conjoined twins but they are two joined although sometimes they share you know certain systems of the body so this is a great mystery concerning the Lord Jesus Christ I and my father are one. Hallelujah. Let's be the name of the Lord. Now Jesus said that, you know, and the Jews, the religious Jews, we know, took up stones to stone him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, you know, Jesus was there teaching and doing his miracles. So, so he asked, for which of those works do ye stone me? They responded, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And what is the blasphemy? Because that thou being a man makest thyself God. John 10, 31 to 33. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, so you see, when he said, I and my father are one, they got the message that Jesus was saying, I am God. Yes. And they were right. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord. Now, after the resurrection of Jesus, he appeared unto the disciples. But Thomas was absent. And when he was told that they had seen the Lord, he's risen. He doubted. He did not keep his doubts to himself. But he said, except I shall see his hands, the prince of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He was looking for concrete evidence because he was there when Jesus was crucified. Hallelujah. He witnessed when the soldiers thrust the spear in his side. And in news of a short time, they could not have been healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he was saying, I need evidence. Yeah. Many times all we hear is about doubting Thomas. But, but I wouldn't, wouldn't give him that name at all. This man wanted to be sure. Because there are many rumors around. Oh, glory to God. Say, so said, I just want to have my own, own experience to come to my own conclusion. Praise the Lord Jesus. According to John 20 and 25, 
And we, we look down on, on verse 27, the same scripture. After eight days, Jesus appeared and said to Thomas, let us read that, verse 27 of John 20. Can I read that scripture? Praise the Lord Jesus. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Did Thomas do that? He didn't. He didn't thrust his hand in his side. But when he saw Jesus for himself, according to verse 28, he said, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Praise the Lord. Remember, we are looking on the divinity aspect of a man called Jesus. Do we get that? Praise the Lord. We're going to take a look now on Paul's statement as he addressed the elders at Ephesus according to Acts 20 and 28. He said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves. That is so wonderful. Sometimes we spend so much time and energy watching others and fixing their business and neglect ourselves. <laughs> so I said to the elders, take heed therefore unto yourselves to feed the church of God. And we know that means spiritual food. Amen. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Huh? One of your following. Praise the Lord Jesus. What do you notice here? Any, anything worth sharing? Church of God is worth sharing. Thank you. Anything else? That's not what has leaped out at me. Anything else? All right. Anybody? Anything else? No, no, no. That's not what, we, what it said. It said to feed the church of God, which God had purchased with his own blood. You don't see it that way? Yes. Now, if God is a spirit, hallelujah, does a spirit have blood? A spirit does not have blood. Amen. So, this must be referring to Jesus Christ as a man. He had blood, but he has been referred to here as God, the church of God. So the church of Jesus Christ and the church of God, same church. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, so my note says, bear in mind that God is a spirit, hence no blood. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 reminds us that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or no removal or no pardon for what? Sin. It necessitates the shedding of blood to deal with the sin question. But God as a spirit does not have blood. Hence, he became a man. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes. So God became a man. And man has blood flowing through his veins. Praise God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 5 states, 
concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is overall God blessed forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So, saints and friends everywhere, we should notice by now that God and Christ are used together and sometimes separately. Amen. Praise the Lord. But don't be confused. An often used quotation is 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's look at that again. All right. Are you going to read? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay, praise the Lord Jesus. So, it is very clear, 1 Timothy 3.16, and it is set out in an orderly manner, showing that Jesus is God. And I have looked at the points and I got seven. I don't know if you got seven too. I got seven points here. Number one, mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. Praise God. God was manifest in the flesh or made known in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. Praise the Lord. And we know that the Lord Jesus Christ has satisfied all those seven. Praise the Lord. Yet it's talking about God. I just love you, Jesus. So we all agree that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior. Amen. Amen. To you this day is born in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Right. Hey, hallelujah. Let's see what Titus says about this. In Titus 1 and verse 3, and we're going to have that one being read for us. Hallelujah. But he hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Thank you. Notice the clause. According to the commandment of God our Savior. Amen. So Jesus is Savior and God is Savior. Who is really the Savior? Hallelujah. Remember, we're looking at the divinity of Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. God, our Savior. I love you, Lord. We mentioned earlier the angels' message, the shepherds. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, what it was that a Savior. Amen. Luke 2 and verse 11. Yes, a Savior was born. And here we see that God is the Savior. Right. Hallelujah. Don't be confused. We need Holy Ghost clarity in all of this. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Any questions so far? Comments? Observation? You are free to share. Okay, I'll go on. Paul writing to the Jewish Christians stressed this superiority of Christ. And we know Hebrews was primarily addressed to the Jews, the Jewish Christians. Hallelujah. Hebrews 8, Hebrews 1 and verse 8, take note of that. But unto the Son... He said, hear it, 
unto the Son, he saith what? Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Unto the Son. So the Son was addressed as God. Praise the Lord Jesus. We give you thanks. Amen. We are going to look on some aspects now where Jesus is called a son of God. Mark's gospel introduces Jesus as the son of God. Mark 1 verse 1. Can you, do you want to read that? Mark 1 verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yes, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Luke 1 and verse 35, in support of that reference, says, The holy thing which shall be born shall be called Son of God. Of God. That's right. Praise the Lord. At the transfiguration of Jesus, remember, Jesus, Peter, James, and John went up to that mountain where he was transfigured, where he was changed. As somebody would say, he, he, he backed away humanity and revealed unto them a little of his divinity. That's what the transfiguration was. Praise the name of the Lord. We read that a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark 9 and verse 7. John 5 and verse 18. Reading from verse 16. We see that the Jews persecuted Jesus and they sought to kill him because he had done miracles on the Sabbath. Oh, God help us. So Jesus said, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course, this caused outrage among the Jews because not only did he break the Sabbath by healing because they called healing work. You see how serious they took the Sabbath? If healing, speaking a word, and healing was performed, they saw it as breaking the Sabbath. What about driving to church on the seventh day? Hallelujah. Huh? I didn't hear that, brother. That's more work. And um, I don't want to go there. I was going to say something, but for Hallelujah. wisdom, for wisdom's sake, I'll keep quiet. But these are things, so really really think about. So Jesus said, my father worked hitherto and I work. We could get sort of two understanding from this. Amen? Yes. yes. Because Jesus had said, if you see me, you see my father. Alright? All right? So when I work, he works. But, but somebody once said, when you, when you read the creation story very closely, there's a passage that tells you that Jesus ended his work on the seventh day. Have you ever noticed that? Yes. All right. That's something we can research. Praise the Lord. Now this statement of Jesus, as I said earlier, outraged the Jews. So they stoned him not. They didn't want to stone him because he broke the Sabbath. That was one Offense, gone. <laughs> but they really wanted to stone him because he claimed that God was his father. 
making himself equal with God. Yes, Amen. And, and um, while I was making the notes, one scripture didn't come to me until I was rereading. Then a particular little scripture, which I call a little scripture, came to me. Let's look at it. Luke 11 and verse 20. Praise the Lord Jesus. Sometimes we ignore some little scriptures, you know. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Now tell me something. Jesus is claiming that he has the fingers of God. Huh? What do the fingers of God look like? Heaven is his throne, earth is footstool. What kind of fingers? So you see, we cannot have literal interpretation to everything. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus was just saying, whatever I do, I do it through the God who dwells within. Praise the Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. As we read the epistles, we, we should notice that they speak much about the Son of God. Let's look at Galatians 4 and verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. All right. Fullness of time. God sent forth his Son. We're going to read another one, this time from Ephesians 3, 14 to 15. Praise the Lord. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. All right. So bowing your knees means you worship. You worship. Praise the name of the Lord. So worshiping the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, who gets the worship? <laughs> Hallelujah. God gets the worship. So we don't have to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Do we have to pray that way? It goes to the same address. Hallelujah. When they pray to Jesus, God the Father, it goes to the same deity. Praise the name of the Lord. We just want to understand. I give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. What was my last reference? Okay. And we have that read already. We're going to note Hebrews 1 and verse 2. What does it say? Hath in, the, in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the world. Hallelujah. So God in this dispensation, in these last days, is speaking by whom? His son. So that's the voice of God. The voice of Jesus Christ is the voice of God. And he inspired the apostles and anointed them with the Holy Ghost and all of that. The voice of God. Now there are many other references in Hebrews. And as I said earlier, we could not... Yes, but, but if you want to go and look them up in your own time, I'll give you a few. Hebrews 3, 5 to 6. And also Hebrews 5, 5 to 8. Revelation 2 and verse 18. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, I, I indicated earlier that it, it's not 
easy if we're going to try to figure out God. It's, it's by revelation. Somewhat difficult to distinguish between the Father and the Son. Amen. Amen. So I, I looked on some remarks by who I call theologians. People have studied, not people, lay people like me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Having gone through all these scriptures that seem to be referring to God in Jesus Christ than individually, they have come to the conclusion, theologians I mean, uh, you know, and uh, that, well, should be two working together. So they coined this phrase, co-equal. They are co-equal. Probably we need to, to do a study on that and say exactly what they are saying. But those who have received revelation know that there is but one God. But multiple manifestations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It doesn't say many. Multiple manifestations manifestations of this one God. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, in the Old Testament, God would appear and wouldn't even be recognized by, by people who saw him. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, my mind goes back to Joshua when he saw this man with his sword drawn and say, so are you for us or for our adversaries? Believe that God manifested himself that way. Jacob, in his wrestling, some of our friends say he wrestled with a man. Others say it was an angel. But it was a manifestation of God. Because God is the one who blesses people. Praise the name of the Lord. And sometimes, you know, even the story about Sodom and Gomorrah, some, some people feel that they were saying they saw so many angels, but actually one was God. We don't know, but God can manifest himself in any way. Yes. Praise the Lord Jesus. So it's, it's difficult, it's not easy, but we have the Holy Ghost. To enlighten us. Praise the name of the Lord. John has much to say. Amen. That's the book of John. Like John 3, 35. Chapter 5 and verse 23. You want us to read and discuss some of that? St. John 3 and verse 35. What does it say? The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Can we entertain a discussion on this? Is that clear to everyone? So everything is turned over. Isn't that so? All right. Chapter 5 and verse 23. That the Father, sorry, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which had sent him. See that? And so they are calling us that nice name, <laughs> Jesus only. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. But he that honoreth honor the Son does what? Honoreth the Father. Honoreth the Father. Praise one script, it's the same scripture that says both Father and Son. There's a scripture that says that. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're not leaving out because we don't believe in duality or trinity. We believe in oneness. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. And we are not blaspheming. Thank you, Lord. In John 10 and verse 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Amen. 
You want other references? John 12, verse 45. John 14, 8 to 9. And also verse 11. Praise God. We can also look at Philippians 2 verse 6, Colossians 1 verse 15, and also verse 19, and then chapter 2 and verse 9. I told you there are so many references, there's no way I could really flesh those out and read them for yourselves. And if you find anything you think you want to share, God willing, and we are here next time, Amen. you can spend some time on your own research. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. All right, we're going to... See that Jesus was called Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And you know, some of the things I say is just in my simplicity, I've said them. Amen. Lord is a simple, everyday word. It came to me and I've written it down for what it's worth. It is also a title. That applies to God or Jesus. We said Lord God and Lord Jesus. Amen. Don't we do that? Yes. Lord God, Lord Jesus. Are we speaking about two lords? No. One Lord. One faith. Don't, that, that's not a baptistry. One baptism. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Simply put. Lord means a person having power over another or over others. You know, that, that is in the everyday life. We're not linking this one now to, to, to religion. But, you know, everyday usage of it. And, of course, I think in the British system, we talk much about lords. Lord of this and Lord this and Lord the other. In, in that system there. Amen. And we know that's one in authority. Amen. Let us look at a few applications of this Lord we are talking about. First one comes to us from Matthew 12 and verse 8. Son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. What does this imply? Lord over the Sabbath. As authority. So that authority does what for him? Exactly. Exactly. He's in charge. So he can shift that and shift that and what? He's Lord over the Sabbath. Praise God. Matthew 22 and verse Verses 41 through to 45. Jesus asks the Pharisees a question. Amen. What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? Hallelujah. No, that's a, quest, a simple question. He asks them, whose son is that? That's not difficult. Hallelujah. <laughs> but did Jesus say, Joseph? Mm -mm. Who? What it says, read that. Verse 42, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. All right. Yes, son of David. <laughs> I think they were trying to trick Jesus, you know. Yes. Jesus said unto them, that David, in the spirit, call, how then, sorry, 
how then doth David in the spirit, you hear that? In the spirit, call him Lord. I, I've left out some because I couldn't write all of it. So if David called him Lord, how is he his son? Yeah? How is he his son? And no man was able to answer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We go over now to the book of Acts, in verse 36, in that encounter with Peter and Cornelius. Yeah? Yes, but we, I'll just, don't worry to read. It just said, Jesus is Lord of all. Yeah. That's what he said. Praise the Lord. Meaning both Jews and Gentiles. Right. We know people were astonished at the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Came on this Gentile household. Yeah. But, but Peter said, he, Jesus is Lord of all. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. No matter how you mean and Meek and lowly or high or in the middle, he's Lord of all. Thank you for that privilege, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord. Philippians 211 says, Every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he's in charge. Glory to God Almighty. We give a thanks, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In John's encounter with God on Patmos, according to Revelation 1 and 13 through 20, we won't read that, but I just love it. The Son of Man was standing in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. Golden candlesticks. Is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. This description merits reading. So read it for yourself. Look at the term. White as wool and of snow. Verse 14. What this implies. Ancient of days. Hallelujah. He's around for a long time. That's exactly what, what, what I put here in my notes. It implies ancient of days. Praise the Lord Jesus. In Revelation 2 and verse 18, John both saw and heard Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's observe how he is described here. Well, you can observe it for yourselves. These things saith the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Go to Revelation yourself. I told you before, I, didn't, I just couldn't write everything. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Everything okay so far? Oh, hallelujah. We can probably look at one other aspect before we close. Jesus performs the works of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we quote the scriptures without even thinking about them. You know, we read the Bible often and they become a part of us and we just quote the scriptures. But we need to Stop and ponder and go back again. Praise the Lord. So Jesus performs the work of God. John 1, 3 and 10. Let's read verse 3 and then verse 10. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So in the beginning, Amen. God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis says that. Amen. And now John is saying all things, made by him. all including the heaven and the earth. All is just all. 
Yes. All things were made by him. One without him was that anything made, that was made. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 10 now. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him. Oh, not. my God. He was in the world. The world was made by him, yet the world knew him not. Hmm? So Jesus performs the work of God. But we have got to recognize, as I thought about it again, I said, not as Jesus in the flesh. Yes. Understand? Yes. Because I have it later on though, so I'm jumping the gun. There's no such thing as an eternal son. Right. Sonship has a beginning and we'll have an end. But we don't come to that portion yet. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, he was there, but not as the Son of God. Right. Remember, we are looking now at the divinity of Jesus. Is everybody seeing it? Amen. Like I've lost some persons. Amen. Very specific. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world him not. We're going to read also Colossians 1, 16 to 20. For by him were all things created that are in the heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Hallelujah. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, and by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. Praise the Lord. Remember, we are looking at Jesus performs the works of God. So we're looking at him here as creator, you know, author and finisher, and so on. In Hebrews 1.10, we are told the Lord laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens. As I said, there are many others. You can look well when you read if you have a Bible that does cross-reference. They are right there. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus also preserves all things. I mean, he keeps them in order. Did we, we, we read a part of Colossians already. Yes, he's before all things, and by him all things consist. Right. And in Hebrews 1 and verse 3, we see where he is upholding all things by the word of his power. Right. Praise the Lord. So, the bound of the sea is there. Amen. Amen. People can predict when it will snow, when it will rain, and that's because everything was already set Amen. in motion. Praise the Lord. So it was only um, create them and leave them there. He keeps them going. Right. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, I'm going to really try to finish this part. Amen. <laughs> Jesus forgives sins. Yeah? Yes. This is clearly a function of God. Hmm? Let's look at Mark 2, 5 to 7. Hallelujah. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason he these things in your heart? In your hearts. Yes. So then only, only God can forgive sin. But Jesus forgave their sins because it's God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Let's look at verse 10. But that he may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, since he said to the sick of the palsy. Yes. Son of Man has power or the authority to forgive, forgive sins. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. I think we should stop. Amen. It's time, but Jesus also sends us spiritual blessings. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. He promised the Holy Ghost. According to Luke 24, 49, and John 8, 36, and 14, 13. Yes. As God, he can bless. Praise the Lord. As God, he raised the dead. All those are different studies, you know. But, but we cannot go in depth to all of them. So I just tell you then. He's coming back to judge the world. References are here. Praise the Lord Jesus. And in conclusion, Jesus possesses the attributes of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just picked them out. He's eternal. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent yeah. and he's unchanging. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's where we stop. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. I, I have one, two. <laughs> All right. Let, let me just finish off these two little parts and pray for me. I'm getting so. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus, I don't, I don't like the word object, but I can't find a better word. It's an object of worship. We should worship Jesus. We are not blaspheming. According to Matthew 2 and verse 2, Revelation 5 and verse 8. Jesus is superior to angels. Hebrews 4 and verse 5. Praise the Lord. And I have here for a conclusion, we look at 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. Brother Drisdale, please come up and, and read that and conclude. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. There is none like our God. He alone deserves all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're reading from verse 24 to verse 28. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, 
then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's stand together. I'll choose you again and again. I'll choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, there, Lord. I'll choose you again. I'll choose you again and again. I'll choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, there, Lord. I'll choose you again. I'll choose you again and again. I'll choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, there, Lord. I'll choose you again. I'll choose you again and again. I'll choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, there, Lord. I'll choose you again. You mean so much to me, dear Lord. I'll choose you again. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And as we pray, if you have a special need... I want for you to believe the Lord. Just, just reach out and touch him. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus and he can touch you right where you are. Lord, we thank you for your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are grateful, dear God, that we can be here to study your words. We thank you, God, for everyone that have come and those who have joined us online. We pray, dear God, that you'll continue to minister to us. Help us, Lord, as we study your words. That we'll be closer drawn to you, Lord. That we'll seek to live our lives in such a way that we please you in what we do. I pray, dear God, more than all, that you'll help us to recognize how powerful you are, Lord. Yet you care about us so much that you made a way that we might escape the pollutions of this world. Lord, you have given us a hope, Lord, of living eternally. And Lord God, I pray that you'll help that those persons who have not yet started to serve you will surrender their lives to you, God, and come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, dear God, for those of us who have started some time ago, that, Lord, we will grow stronger in you. Oh, God, we have been admonished by your word to become strong. Oh, God, in the power of your might. We pray, dear God, you touch our hearts, touch our bodies, touch our minds. And just be with us, Lord, that as we go through this difficult period, this pandemic, that we will make a difference, Lord, to those who are around us. That they'll recognize that there still exists a people of God. Cover us under your blood, we pray, as we're about to go there, God. Let your presence be with us. We pray, there, God, that you'll continue to overshadow our pastor. Lead and direct our Lord and give our inspiration, Lord, vision. We continue, Lord, to just put her in your hands. Oh, God, we recognize that there's an adversary. But, Lord, we are believing you for the victory. For God, you never fail. Have your own way. No, we pray. We give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us another time. May God bless you richly.